Shalom and blessings, everybody. Giving all honor to the Most High Power, Yahuwah, on this beautiful yom. Today is day 38 of the word of the day. And that word is obedience. Obedience is actually the conjugated form of the word obey. And so to obey is to put obedience into action. And obey comes from the Hebrew word Shema. And that's Strong's H8085. And it means to hear, to listen, to obey, to hear with attention, to give heed, to consent, to regard. And it says here to understand. But in light of us unlearning and relearning, going into language morphology, linguistics, and breaking down the prefixes and suffixes, we can see that to understand means that there's a void of perceiving, a void of conceptualizing what is being presented, a void of processing information that's coming at us, words, uh, facts, um, even what we may be reading in the scriptures. So a better word would be to overstand, as my sister says, understand. Because when we understand something, it gets in the inward parts of our heart and our heart begins to process it. And, you know, the heart and the mind is likened to one another The heart, because the heart is connected to the mind. So when we understand something, um, we're able to process more wholeheartedly the information that's coming in and drawing inferences and making conclusions from there. So praises to the Most High for that revelation. So we know that um, when we talk about obedience, we have to give an honorary mission about mention to the most high power, Yahuwah, the sovereign creator of heaven and earth and everything in it. The flowers of the field, the herbs of the garden, the deeps of the sea, the fowls, the creeping thing, everything, the luminaries, all of his co-labor, all of our co his creation, our co-laborers and witnesses. Uh, so we thank him for uh, the laws that he has given us. He's written those things, those laws on the heavenly tablets. Um, and those things were placed there to help mankind uh, on earth self-govern and exist uh, with the fellow co-creation to serve the most high to serve and help each other. So we serve and help each other. We're actually serving the most high as well. Um, but we know uh, man for a season has lost dominion. And so, uh, the wicked one, the lawless one, and all of what serves him um, and it uh, has been loosed. And it just, we're waiting on those old things to pass away. We pray that we'll be worthy enough to escape the things that are coming up so that we can enter into eternal rest through the unique son, Yahusha Hamashiach, in the kingdom. In the kingdom. So it requires us to do that. It requires us to be obedient. So um, we know that disobedience caused Adam and Eve to get kicked out of the garden. So they were not able to see the fruit, the fruit of the law come forth that the father had intended to come forth during that time. So um, now we 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 have where we are in this season because of the children of Israel uh, transgressing the law, transgressing, breaking the covenant that they were bound by. And they bound themselves quite a few times, even in the book of Joshua may mention that, a, that there was a rock that witnessed them binding them, themselves into doing what the most high had commanded them to do. So uh, we see that oh, disobedience has caused their descendants in the latter days to go through many trials and tribulation sufferings afflictions injustices all forms of lawlessness and there was never not a time where there was not lawlessness existing in the nation of yashar all um so praises to the most high that he we were worthy enough uh to exist in a time period as such as this this is a really a miracle um so it, in order to really to enter into the kingdom because the, the point i'm trying to make is that with the law we know to keep the sabbath right the guard the seventh day, keep it holy, keep it Kodesh, set apart. We know to observe as best as we can in sincerity and heart, in sincerity and truth, the Moedim, the Day of Atonement, 
Um, some people may know it as as as, as Yom Kippur. I don't want to get too caught up on uh, the semantics in this regard. And I'm always open to receiving more. So please do correct and edify and share. Uh, learn me something. We know to do the Moedim, right? These are appointed times where the Most High has come to meet with his people, right? And it is also taught and, and mentioned that, you know, uh, some servant, servants will be getting sealed during certain appointed feast days. So um, we know that that was an ordinance that the Most High said we were to keep in all our our generations forever, including the, the Sabbath. We know that if we sin and if we have knowledge of what sin is, what is it? Transgression of the law. If you if you did not know, that is what sin is. It's transgression of the law. And the law, by definition, is, is obviously the Torah. But Torah means instructions and directions. And how do we hear the instructions and the directions? I got to jump a little bit, but stay with me. We hear them through the mouth of the Most High. Audibly, he commands us to do these things. <clears throat> Excuse me. I apologize. So... That's what sin is. Sin is transgression of the law. So we know that the Most High is requiring us to do these appointed times, the Sabbath. Um, if we sin, we are to repent, right? Um, if we backslid, if we if we veered off the narrow path and we're back into the world and the Most High has convicted us and we have actually started the process of repentance, we've done Teshuva. He's granted us Teshuva because he does not have to grant repentance. He can keep us with a reprobate mind. He can keep us with the spirit of air. He can keep us locked into our sin. And we have examples of that in the scripture. I don't know if I have time to bring it out. I, I'm at about seven minutes now. He've granted us teshuva. We've turned, started a process of turning back to the Most High with all of our heart. That's a form of repentance. That's one form of repentance there. But what about the things that he's speaking to us about individually in these days? I wanted to focus on that because he has really laid that on my heart um, over the last uh, year. The things that he has told us to do that if we do not do them it would could be considered a sin for us but he didn't tell that other person over there to do this what about that book that you've been sitting on that book you've been telling you to write what about that job he told you to come off of because he has something else for you in store did he tell you to start that podcast have you started it those products that you have sitting in your home on the shelf have you opened up your e-commerce store. Maybe he's been dealing with you about getting your passport. Oh, it's been months, maybe years. Have you initiated it? Maybe he told you to move out of that house. All right. See, we know that we know that for for those that that are in the so-called Ahmed truth. Uh, we we know all of the, the, the law, statutes, and commands. Now, there's there's some that we might need to go brush up on or, or some of them that, that are, you know, uh, are kind of old and outdated. You know, I still respect, give a lot of respect to the Most High for the original, the, the law, the 613 laws. Um, it, was, it was to keep us without spot and without blemish until we got reconciled back to the Mashiach. So I'm thankful for the most high uh, in that regard that he gave us something and how to, you know, to govern ourselves so that we can be ready. You know, we can be ready for the bridegroom. We can be ready for the Mashiach, you know, but I'm going to say, I'm going to say this. Um, there's some elements of the law that we want to definitely of the law. Uh, I'm not going to say the law of old, but the law that was given to Moshe uh, that we definitely do not want to find ourselves doing. We have to pray to the most high uh, and see where he leads us uh, in that regard. So for instance, uh, Leviticus chapter 24, um, verse 15, excuse me, verse 14 and 15. It's, it's pretty much talking about uh, the one who cursed the camp and uh was sent to death by stone and so we don't 
want to be out here stoning nobody okay uh, so for you know for those that may be new um there are some things in the scripture that we it, it is the word the most high whether he said it verbally out of his mouth or he spoke it uh, via the Ruach HaKadosh through a vessel right uh, we have to make sure that we have some key elements um and that's heavenly wisdom and the holy spirit and there may be some things that you're not sure about take it to the most high and petition in prayer and then go and book it and you wait patiently maybe you have someone that's really strong in the scripture um it, it talks about how in a multitude of counselors i have to go and find the scriptures it's just coming out like this in the multitude of counselors, there's safety. So I just had to throw that disclaimer in there, um, just so that, just just so that you know we're covered. We're making sure that we're moving in in the spirit of the Most High and the spirit of truth, which leads into all truth. We got the Rock Hakadesh leading us. We got heavenly wisdom guiding us, and so uh, there's there is no room uh, for error or for anybody to be led astray. So. I'm going to go ahead and start wrapping this up, but before, and I'm, and honestly, I can keep, I can talk about obedience all day. Um, I, I had so much to bring out, but I'm just going to keep it simple is, is, is where I'm being directed. Um, the most high is speaking to us. He's speaking to us as a nation. He's speaking to us as, as, uh, twain became one flesh, husband and wife became one flesh together. He's speaking to us individually. Are we listening and are we taking heed and are we obeying? We may hear. Many people are hearing, but we are we obeying? The most high for the, as, he does, he has a way. He does have a way with forcing his will on those that are chosen. No matter what you do. So I don't want to say that the most high is not going to make you. In a lot of cases, there is a choice. But some people may have personal testimonies of how his will has been forced into our lives. And there's nothing that you can do to escape it until you obey and submit to the voice of the Most High Yahuwah. Now, before I leave, I want to give you some examples of how disobedience resulted in some form of punishment for our forefathers and those that came before our time uh, during the time of the ancients. Um, be it death or their name being cast out as a reproach or a byword amongst their peers. Uh, consider Nabal uh, in First Kings, excuse me, First Samuel chapter 25, Abigail's husband. I mean, he lived up to the reputation of his name respectfully. Um, his name literally translates to fool. Um, if you look it up in the Strong's Concordance, uh, and I mean, that's how he will go down forever in history throughout all generations. Uh, as his name bears a reproach and it's a byword throughout the generations. Uh, so I invite you to uh, examine, closely examine First Samuel chapter 25. Another example was the prophet Jonah. Jonah, he was in the belly of the well for three days and he compared that experience as being in the belly of hell. Hell. He didn't know when he was going to be delivered out or if he was even going to be delivered out by the Most High until he cried out and the Most High commanded that the well sped him out. So I invite you to read that as well. And lastly, I want to leave you um, with the testament from 1 Kings chapter 13, the, the man of Yah and the old prophet. In this case, the man of Yah did not, inf did not follow or obey the instructions of the Most High. It was so interesting because he actually did hear the voice of the Most High. And for a time, if you read it, he did obey. But it wasn't until the Most High sent the old prophet to test and tempt the young prophet, the man of Yah, it says, to see if he was going to continue to carry out the mission that the Most High had gave him. And sadly, he did not. And it cost him his life. So I pray that in this season, we really, really get to know the voice of the Most High Yahuwah. There's a lot of voices that's speaking out here. And the deception is at an all-time high. It sounds like a cliche, 
but it just is what it is. So we have to make sure that we know that we know that we know that we can we can say confidently that I know that this is the most high speaking to me and I'm going to follow through. Don't get distracted. Don't waver. Hear, obey and pray your way through. I pray that if this message was a blessing to you and it convicted you in any way, repent now and turn you from your sins. Peace and blessings, family. One love.